Hey you guys, it's Nathan back with another video. Today I want to share with you guys how to compile different objects or different parts of images into one image, whether it's making a collage, a thumbnail, or anything that it requires a lot of just putting different pieces together. So let's work on that today. All right, so here we are. Uh, we're going to open up Photoscape X, and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. The different examples that were sent over to me, uh, there was this one uh, where they're saying, hey, you got this photo here where you have some text at the top, you have a person's face on the side, and then you have the map of the United States. So you have that one. And then you have this one, which is you have uh, you have Trump on one side, and then you have some text on the side as well. You have kind of a YouTube logo uh, down here with probably the channel name or something like that. So with those two photos of mine, we're going to kind of recreate them or recreate some of the elements in them to show you guys how to compile a photo or how to compile, uh, whether it's for a photo, like a thumbnail or a collage. So the way that I do it, which is the way that I believe most people would using Photoscape X. You, of course, could use Affinity or you could use Photoshop as well. But most of the times you'll just go to opening a new project. You'll hit new and in here you'll make the width and the height of what you're making. And there's some different presets in most software, whether you're doing a Facebook cover, an Instagram profile, a Twitch profile, YouTube profile. In this case, we're going to go down here to YouTube thumbnail and we're going to hit OK. And then it makes a YouTube uh, perfect size for the YouTube thumbnail, what they recommend, which is 720 by or 1280 by 720. So now you'll add in your images. Now to do this, um, sometimes I'll put kind of a base image just for the background, just because sometimes I like more than just a blank white background. So my background of choice, and I can put this image up as well so you guys can use it as well. But basically it's just a blue and a white, kind of the color theme for my channel, uh, blue and white. So I put that in there. And one thing that's important to remember is you have these kind of teal lines that go across and you can turn that on uh, and off. But that teal line helps to remind me what's left in the image. What also is helpful is up here in the top left hand corner, you have what's called layers. Uh, you click that and then it shows you all the layers. So then I can turn on or off that first layer. So I can go back and see, okay, so what does it look like without that part of the image? And you can do that for all the different images or text or anything that you put in there. There's also quick buttons for duplicating or to delete or to even merge the layers together. So that's super helpful as well. So let's go and we'll see what we can do to make these different photos a reality. Let's look at, well, this last one kind of has, this second one actually is probably the easiest. So you got an image here. Whoopsie. Sorry, guys. I scrolled and it messed the whole thing up. Sorry. So you have uh, Trump on one side, and then you have dark, and then you have some text in here. So this is pretty simple. You just have a subject in your image. So like in this case, I'll just go and find a photo of myself. And hopefully I can find one pretty simply. Those are different stuff there. SSD template. Oh, let's see images to sort who actually they might just be in photos here we go so let's just say I've got a photo of myself in here that I want to add okay Photoscape X no no oftentimes just keeping your photos organized is the name of the game so uh, uh, here we go. Here we have an image. I cut the background out of the image using the cutout tool, which I can totally show you guys if you want to. I have other videos on the cutout tool as well. But what I do is I'll arrange that uh, photo that I just inserted in by clicking image, going in, inserting it. And then I can go and make a maneuver that wherever I want, I can also change the size of it to bigger or smaller depending on what I want and I can also rotate it. So like in the example where you had Trump's face on one side of the image, in this case 
I can put myself on that side of the image. I can increase the size to whatever I want it to be. Of course, the higher quality the image, the better. In this case, it's a pretty nice high quality image, but just don't make it too big if it is a kind of a lower uh, quality image. Nonetheless, so I have that face right there and I can maneuver this. And of course I can make this bigger or smaller depending on what I want, but I can make it so, okay, so the white's over here and then it's me, and then I have the blue over here, and I could of course turn or rotate or do different things depending on what colors I like to have behind me. Uh, nonetheless, you can see in the layers over here, you have my face, then you have that uh, background image behind me. So I can drag that and flip it, so then I'm behind that image, or I can put it back in front. I can turn off myself, I could turn off the background, you can do all those things. You can also merge it, but I might want to move it around as I continue to work with this stuff. Next, we can go over here to text, and your text might look different from my text, but what I usually do for the text is I put an outline here. Uh, let me make this real big so you guys can see it. I usually put an outline on here so it can differentiate really heavily. I have usually a color gradient, which you can find, and you can go and select it to be like maybe a red or a green or whatever color you want and then you can also pick a second color so if you say oh wow I don't like the blue going to that far of a white you can say okay cool let's do it to a blue to another blue and maybe you say oh that's too much let me do an orange to maybe a different shade of orange and it's just whatever you would like to do whatever you'd like to see uh, in those uh, in your text and you can change the text size so I could come over here and I could type in uh, whoa, sorry guys, Nathan, then I can hit duplicate, which is usually what I do. I'll hit duplicate and move it and I'll do Nathan, then I'll do Collins and I'll, me, I'll move and adjust this. I make those duplicates so they are the same settings and then I can move around each word individually. You can of course write as much as you want. There is in the more options. You can change the spacing from the spacing of the letters or the spacing of the lines. Either way, you can do a lot with that. And whoopsie. Oh, I had the wrong thing selected there. Uh, then I can go over here and I could hit duplicate again. And I could write Nathan Collins. And I could write... Uh, uh, new video. Now let's say it's too big or something. I can make it smaller. Uh, I can do different things with it. Uh, but let's say that's what I want to do. Uh, you can put that all in. You could change or move this stuff around. You could take this all away if you wanted to. Um, but from what we were looking at as that sample image, let's see if there was anything else that we missed. So you have that picture, you went to like a darker side, and then you put some text in here. Um, let's say you wanted the text to go over the person's face. Um, maybe you wanted it to go a lot further. You can do that. And, whoa, like Nathan Collins, you know, kind of interesting. But the way that you make it go over that person's face is you have it at higher up on that layers list. And I could go and I could drag this below and then my face is in front. You can also go over here and hit bring forward or bring backwards and all of that. So those things, whoops, you can also hit duplicate accidentally and make a bunch of copies. So you can definitely move things around, mess with it as much as you want. But uh, that would be my encouragement for you guys to be able to be, feel comfortable with moving around those different layers. So uh, that is what helps me to be able to make a lot of the thumbnails that I've made. Let me show you guys a few of the thumbnails. Here's uh, just a compiled list of a few of the thumbnails that I put together uh, or I have put together recently. So you have uh, this one, which is my, oopsie, uh, which is my uh, affinity photos uh, one. Then I have this one, which is my affinity Black Friday. I have this one, my photo shoot, my thumbnails, uh, the best on Amazon, the color tab, the quick menu, the Photoscape X tips and tricks, and uh, even stuff like my selfie, my 20, uh, 20, uh, my LO2 
selfie stick video, you know, these different images, you should begin to think through how they're made. You say, okay, so we put some text here using that gradient, that back, uh, that, um, that outline. And then he has just the image itself, so the nice clean image there. And then he also, using that cutout, put himself on the side, kind of make it, remind people that, oh yeah, that's me editing. And what I did was I just put this image in, and because I wanted myself to stand out, I put a little uh, drop shadow behind me. Sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not, but it's something that you should be aware of and take a look at each time you're putting together an image so you can see how this stuff works. So hopefully that's helpful to kind of look through uh, making thumbnails. Let's look at the other thumbnail here. In this one, there's more going on. There's text, there's another image in here, and then there's another, uh, then there's the map of the US. What you have to remember when you're putting in these different elements is what's exactly necessary and what's exactly helpful. Um, also, in this image, it kind of looks a little unprofessional. I know that it's a low quality image, but these are just samples. But like it's kind of a low quality image to have her in the image where you don't have it cut out from the background or something. One thing that I would encourage you is to try to find some kind of a full size image to put as the background that might have your subject in it or just something that would be a neutral thing in there. So like let's say I was talking about something with the election or something like that. What I would do is, yeah. I would hop over to this and may I put a US flag and you have a picture of a US flag that you could put as your backdrop. So let's just uh, uh, pick something. Uh, let's see. Let's just find a photo in here, and I want it to be a fairly large size photo. Going over to your tools, going over here to, not medium, let's go to large. And then what you can do is you can save that image in, because if you're talking on that subject, maybe it's helpful. And you go over to images, you find what you just downloaded, uh, you click that in, you make it pretty big, then you have the American flag, and then I can put it back, and I can put myself back there behind the U.S. flag. You know, and it's things like that that can be really helpful or really useful, or maybe I want to make it bigger, and it's just the, the stripes of the flag, um, or whatever you'd like. But it can be helpful to make those different backgrounds so you can have it be very dynamic. Um, also, remembering to cut out the subjects in your image so it doesn't just have those white boxes on uh, back behind um, it's those type of things that can be really useful and really helpful to be able to do that and you know yeah maybe there's sometimes you want to put a graph or maybe you want to put something back there in the back but trying to find a way to make it high quality make it uh, really solid and then of course at the end making sure when you're saving it out to save it out as a project so then you can go back and work with it more um, if you wanted to change it or adjust it later on because there's so many times where I've wanted to go back to some of these thumbnails that I've put together I'm like oh I want to move that or I want to change that or I want to adjust it like in my most recent one I said hey I messed up something with the text here um, let me go back to edit and even though I haven't messed with that this I didn't I haven't messed with this image for a long time what's really helpful is that I'm able to just go back to it and click in and say, look, I can change that. I can take that overlay away because it kind of took away from the image. I can go to click transform and then I can stretch this text out to be whatever I'd like. I can change this, uh, maybe the rotation of that backdrop so it can kind of line up more with the rest of the image. Maybe I can change the spacing in the lettering so then I can put it closer together so I can stretch it out and make it look more bold. You know, it's those type of things that you're able to do that are so helpful and things that you should be thinking about. Like, look at this image. There's not a ton going on in it, but, you know, there's the image of myself. You have the background. You have the text. Uh, but look at all of these different uh, layers in here. And it's looking and thinking through, okay, so you have the layer of the background. Then you have uh, the photo itself, or you have this, or you have that, you know. It's stuff like that that you have to think through 
when you're moving and shifting things around. Cause like one thing I did with this image, the image itself, uh, this image here, it's nice. It's a nice image, but the screen isn't on in the image that I took. So I actually went and I grabbed the, I grabbed the, uh, the screen being turned on. I grabbed that from the production, the product photography uh, on Amazon itself, straight from there, and I cut it out. And then I just went and I pasted it right on. And it makes it look so much better because it actually shows it turned on instead of it looking more like, oh, wow, uh, that doesn't look as exciting. It's finding those things. It's compiling those things. And I hope that this video has been helpful so you guys can take a closer look at how to make thumbnails and in many cases when you're putting together these thumbnails think about the kind of the end user uh, think about what it's going to look like even if it ends up being a super super small image make sure it's clear make sure the photo's crisp make sure that your text is nice and large um, but you guys I would love to know your thoughts if you have any other questions or comments on the subject but Thank you so much for watching this video and hope that this helped you in putting together collages or thumbnails or things like that. But thank you all so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.